Very good to see you. Congratulations on the book. I'm sure it is a, a lot of work. And then when it comes out, I'm sure it's very satisfying. I'm or maybe myself. not. I'm enjoying myself. It's yeah. been many, many years since I had six years since my last book. We'll talk about the title of the book, Talking to Strangers and Yeah. Well, what it, we don't know. It's, the book is all about this idea that we think all the tools we have for making sense of our friends betray us when we talk to strangers. So we're really good. If I know you really well, I have a whole series of strategies I use to kind of understand you, decode your behavior. Unconsciously. Unconsciously and consciously. OK. But then if I transfer those same strategies to someone who's a stranger, you go off in all kinds of weird and random directions, and you end up making all kinds of grave mistakes. And the book is about, it's a whole series of stories about all the ways in which our, our strategies for dealing with strangers lead us awry. I think that's true. And I, I have my own kind of experiences that have led me to that. And like I've had, you know, you walk out and I, I'll see the audience and most everyone is mm -hmm. clapping and happy and then you meet a guy, you see a guy who's got his arms folded and I inevitably will zero in on that person. Yes, about the one Start talking to that fun. person and yeah. then and the guy says, oh, I'm just real excited to, to be here. Uh, you know, I watched the show every night and you go, oh, well, I thought you were unfriendly and it turns out I was just wrong. Yeah. And well, the, the word, the technical word for that is some, that person is mismatched. Mm -hmm. So matched is where, so Anthony Anderson, who was just here, is perfectly matched. Mm -hmm. when, he was, when he's excited, he looks excited, right? When he was, you know, telling that kind of story, you, you, you got the sense that as you looked at his facial expression and his body language, it was perfectly in harmony with the way he felt inside. But he wasn't, there wasn't a kind of discrepancy between those two things. The guy in the audience like this, who's having a great time, is mismatched. And we have trouble with people who are mismatched. Mm. But lots of people are. I mean, actors aren't mismatched. You can't be a mismatched actor. Well, one right? of the things you talk about is Friends, the yeah. show, which is maybe the most popular show of all time in the yeah. history of television. And you say that the Friends is lying to us. In Friends, a way. Friends is yeah. deeply misleading. So the thing about. They the great friends? paradox of Friends is, <laughs> if you describe, if you try and describe the plot of an episode, it's like impossible. It's like if you diagrammed it on a flow chart, it would take up pages. You know, Monica does this, and like Phoebe, and then Rachel goes off in this direction. But no one has ever watched an episode of Friends that at the end said, you know, I, they lost me. <laughs> <laughs> right? it never happens. So the question is, why, what's this, how do you explain this paradox? And the explanation is that everyone on Friends is perfectly matched. So. When Phoebe is surprised, her jaw drops, her eyes go wide, and her eyebrows go up, right? When Ross is perplexed, as he often is, <laughs> he's like, he looks exactly like a perplexed person is supposed to look. So like you watch the show, you can turn the sound off. I've done this. Turn the sound off on an episode you haven't seen before, and then at, at the end of it, ask yourself, did I know what was going on? Totally. You will know what's going on. Totally. But the whole point is, that's not real life. No one behaves that way in real life. It's like the emoji of shows, in a way. Yeah, no, it, it yeah. is. A, is so they've, if you, all you do, as many of us do, is watch TV shows like Friends, right. you come away with this totally phony picture of the real world. And people, we think we know how to read. Like, people, a lot of people, poker players, whatever, take yeah. real pride in being able to read. Are you saying that we, none of us really can, or are, they, are there experts that really can read other people? So the, there's a huge amount of psychological research on this. And the bottom line is that human beings are universally, with like a tiny number of exceptions, terrible at telling whether someone is telling them the truth. Really? We just can't do it. We all have all these pretend things, like the person you know looks to the left, and that's a tell. It's just nonsense, total nonsense, right? Basically, everything you learn on those Mindhunter late, you know, cop shows about how the savvy FBI guy can tell what, it's just complete and utter nonsense. You, they can do tests where you have a, F, a seasoned FBI agent and you show them a series of you know, videotapes where half are people lying and half are people telling the truth, and you say, tell me which is which, and they can't do it. Really? They can, it's just all. They're, they're no at, better than anybody no else. No better than anybody else. Wow. It's a real, so it's, this is a, one of those little fictions. But imagine what television cop shows would be like if they accurately reflected human behavior. <laughs> They'd be ridiculous. It, so at the end of the Law and Order episode, or like the mind hap, the FBI agent would be like, oh, I have no idea what the <laughs> You couldn't, no, none of those shows, you'd never be at like the third act of the show where they wrap it up. They couldn't wrap it up. 
They'll just be like, ah. What about judges? <laughs> judges who sit there and they talk, like Judge Judy, for instance, yeah. who sits there and talks to one yeah. person after another and has to determine who's telling the truth and who isn't. No, not even Judge not Judy. Not even Judge. I mean, I, I feel bad for, like, I don't want to harsh on Judge You shouldn't <laughs> single her out, yeah. But because she'll come at you. <laughs> yeah. Also, remember, they're, like, selecting. I mean, how many, how many people does she judge? And then they pick, like, the two that are the most impressive. We most don't see that. Yeah. We don't see the 20 times when she totally got it wrong. <laughs> right. I don't know. I get the idea they're using every, every minute of Judge Judy's <laughs> like, time like, is being, is being super, used on camera. Super efficient. But this, you know, you, what's interesting, of course, is that you talk to strangers for a living. Mm hmm Right. So I would be really, I mean, every single night, you're, I mean, not always meeting someone for the first time. But often, right? You've never met Oftentimes, them and I talk to a lot of strangers outside of the show. Well, I mean, I probably this weekend, I probably talked to 250 strangers, maybe 350 People strangers. People coming up, not you actively searching out strangers. Yeah, no, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was in the intersection. Not, I stand on the intersection here and I say, I'm on TV, everybody. <laughs> no, but I talk to a lot of strangers. And I do feel like, I get a sense of them, but maybe I, I'm not. Well, you're, the, a lot of it, though, is people are, rea the, you're very, very nicely matched, I will say. Oh, thank you. Is I that good? You don't, you don't have any secret agendas. Like, if you're, when you're engaged, I think you look engaged. Uh-huh. Um, so I think people respond to that when they, when strangers come up to you in the street, they're like, I think I understand what's going on inside Jimmy's heart. Oh, what is going on in there? <laughs> you know? <laughs> My, I will say this is a Seems stage. to be a lot of cholesterol in there. <laughs> my, um, you know, every time, I think this is my third time on the show. Yeah. And every time you send me a picture. Uh-huh, right, And it's yeah. framed and it comes to my house. Right. And my cleaning lady, she, someone, <laughs> she's very aggressive in how she, which pictures she puts up on the mantle. And she will always take down the ones of my family and put up the ones. Oh, I like that. That's so nice. I feel like she has this special connection with you. She's like, <laughs> to hell with like Malcolm's mom. <laughs> it's Jimmy that I feel like I can. Because like, I don't come over and mess up the guest no, room. No, So like literally, like she turns the one with my parents down, and then Jimmy gets turned up. So you are connecting. To... I'm gonna write something specifically to her on the <laughs> Gloria, thing. Gloria loves you, man. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. I love reading your books. This one is called Talking to Strangers. It's out now. Malcolm Gladwell, everybody. We'll be right back with Melanie Martinez. I am Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.